Based on overwhelming requests, I am going to be showing you today how to make ushta. Now, ushta uh, is the Arabic name for something that you may know as clotted cream. And I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step right now. Okay, so this has to be the easiest recipe in the world. As far as ingredients go, there's only one ingredient in making ushta. And that is what I have here in this picture. Now this is not milk, this is cream. So this, if you tuned in to see anything low fat today, sorry to disappoint you, there's nothing low fat. This cream is organic, it's fresh, it's pasteurized, but it's not ultra pasteurized. So I have in here in my pitcher four cups. The butter fat that's in here is, it has to be minimum 35%. Sometimes you can get 38%, but 35% is the minimum. This is a real treat. This is an indulgence. This is something that you wouldn't eat every day, but it really is lovely. So you need something that has the maximum surface. So I'm going to start by pouring in my cream, every drop inside my pan. Okay. Now, this is the perfect amount for this particular tray. You want to be able to have some room, okay? You don't want to fill it to the rim, so it's sort of halfway full or three quarters full. Now I'm going to turn on the heat. What you have to remember about making this ushta is the milk can't boil, so you're not trying to bring it up to boil. We're actually, um, the, the term is scalding, so the milk has to be at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit at that temperature. So you start off by bringing it up to heat and then lower it, slow simmer. Now, there is a lot of time and patience that's required to make ushta. It's not the kind of thing that you decide I'm going to make it now and it's going to happen in a matter of five minutes because you are relying on the technique of evaporation. So water is going to evaporate out of this cream as it bubbles. And also you're trying to destabilize the fat and we're trying to actually separate the butter fat from the less fatty milk. So that's basically what's happening here. For a quantity like this, it may take anywhere between two to three hours. Do I still have your attention? It's a time-consuming little experience, but um, it's well worth it in the end. You don't have to stand by it all the time and watch it, but you do have to keep an eye. You don't put this on the stove and, 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 and leave the room. You sort of putter around and do other things and just let it do its thing. So what basically happens is the butter fat is going to float to the surface and the way the milk is going to be down. It's very similar to clarifying butter. Now, I want you to look at the, the cream here. If you can see, it's, there's already some, some of the yellow, uh, that's, that's butter fat, is already starting to float to the surface and it's starting to get, get hot. And even already, we've just started, you can already see there is a slight film that has already built up on top of the cream. And that is sort of the, the beginning of this process of ushta that is going to float to the surface and leave the milk behind. Okay, so I wanna turn your attention back to the, to the tray here. And you see now the bubbling has increased. And I'm just gonna use my spatula just to show you here, you see? the film. Now, the one thing that you have to resist doing is stirring. We're not after stirring this because it defeats the purpose. You're trying to separate the two things. So all I'm doing is just moving the, uh, the top layer away every once in a while just to give it a chance to, to, to do its work. And you see how it's bubbling. It is ever so slightly. It's just a simmer. And it's going to continue like that. Um, you know, throughout the two, three hours that it's going to take. All right, so we just have to be patient. So I suggest you um, get a book and read, put on some music, watch a movie, um, find something to do, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so two hours later, the cream has now taken on a totally different look. 
as you can see, all the, the yellow that's floating on the top, that is the ushta now, and a lot of the separation has happened. So well, actually what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to turn it off, and here I have a colander and a bowl to catch any excess liquid, and I'm just going to get a slotted spoon or a spatula, and I'm gonna show you, you see, the difference. So basically, carefully, you just wiggle around and pick up the ushta and place it on the colander. And I will continue to pick up the ushta. And actually in Arabic, it's called ushta. The reason it's called ushta, uh, it's a verb. It comes from the word ashat, which means to, to take out whatever is floating to the surface. So it's a perfect name for the dish. Patience pays off because now you have this beautiful, luxurious ushta to enjoy. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I love to use this with. Number one is ataif. Now, the ataif that I made in a previous video uh, was the kind that were bigger than these and it was fried. This is another version that we call ataif asafir. That literally means bird. If you want to know how to make this dough from scratch, I'll put up the link. You pinch half of the pancake and leave half open. Now, do you see how this looks like a bird's beak? Yes, that's why it's called asafir. And then I take some of this ushta with a spoon. Mmm, so yummy and just fill it as much as it can fit in. Okay, I would say that's probably about a little teaspoon. And then what we do is, I have pistachio nuts right here, and this is getting, gonna get dunked inside the pistachio, and then you are left with something that looks like this, a bird's beak that is covered with sweet pistachios. Now remember the ushta has no sugar in it. It's not sweet. It's milky and creamy, but there's no sugar whatsoever. And the same thing with the uh, with the atayef. So here I have rose syrup. Now this is basically simple syrup that I've made. And the reason why it's pink is I've just added a little tinge of food color and there's the flavor of rose water in it. And then all I do is just drizzle on just as much or as little as you want. So you can sweeten it as much as you like. And another use for this beautiful ushta is with scones. This is some of the jam that I made um, in the fall using Concord grapes. And then I put it on top of the scone and then I take a little bit of the ushta and place that on top and then cover it and there. And another use for ushta, and it's very, very popular in the Arab world, and it's often a treat that you get in a lot of, um, you know, uh, Arabic restaurants. I can't think any of anything more delicious and luxurious where you get a couple of dollops of this beautiful ushta, uh, usually on a plate, and I'm going to put just a little bit here. I think that's more than enough for one serving. And remember, there's no sugar in it, so we want to sweeten it up. And this time, instead of syrup, I'm going to actually use honey. And in the restaurant, this is what they would do. They would actually do this and get really fancy and lift it up and down. And it's, it's a, a little bit of theater while you're sitting there watching them pour the honey. So that would be enough. And then on top, we garnish it with sweet, crunchy, beautiful, buttery pistachio nuts. I'm going to start with this one first. Yum. Get a little bit of that honey. Mm. It's the creamiest, dreamiest um, ushta I've ever, I've ever uh, had. I mean, when you make it from scratch, there's really nothing quite like it. And the honey complements all that richness of the buttery ushta. And of course, the, the pistachio nuts are just that nice sweet crunch that are just perfect. I think I'll try the atayef. And the atayef 
is already doused in syrup and you would just pick it up like this. I mean, I'm not gonna put it all in my mouth, but it is technically a bite. I'm just gonna take a little big piece. Yum. Even though ushta is in here and pistachios are in here, very similar to the honey, the rose syrup gives it a completely different taste. It's, it's got that nice floral background that's so indicative of desserts in the Arab world. And uh, the, um, the pancakes that hold it all together give it just a slight uh, chew, a nice texture as well. So this is really, really nice. I'm just going to try one and just take a little bite. Mm. Oh my God, now I know why. This is such an obsession in England and in Ireland and in Scotland where the scones are so famous. It's so delightful. If you've got extra ushta left over because it's probably going to be more than you need to eat in one day, ushta can sit in the refrigerator covered, uh, cold, for between 10 days to two weeks. It'll be fine. If you can finish it within that time, that's good. Or you think you can get through it on the day that you make it when it's the freshest, put some in a container and it's actually freezable as well. I hope you enjoyed this, um, this day uh, making ushta together and I hope you give it a try and um, I say to you, Sahau Hana.